What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about Canadian Heritage Minutes, which are these great one minute long videos that teach you about important moments and people throughout Canadian history. And today, I am excited to continue my journey watching all of these Heritage Minutes. I've currently watched about 18 out of 99 episodes. Oh my goodness, so I have quite a ways to go. But today I wanna to take a look at three more Canadian Heritage Minutes, starting with one called Blue Nose. Blue Nose, uh, I've never heard of that. Doesn't really mean anything to me. So it's a Nova Scotian schooner which is a type of boat, right? A schooner. I, I know some things. I know things about boats. <laughs> schooner, the undefeated champion of the International Fisherman's Trophy. So this is a very, like, decorated, accomplished boat. Schooner, excuse me. Uh, this is not just any boat, and it's called Blue Nose. Is It's pitted against an American ship in the last and most dramatic sailing race of her career in 1938. We're almost coming up on its 100 years here. My God. Oh, it'll be 2038 and only 14 years. Oh, man. It's all it's all going by too soon. Anyway, I didn't mean to turn this into a existential crisis. We're trying to learn about Canadian <laughs> history here. Um, that's funny. It's a Canadian, famous Canadian boat from Nova Scotia. And this this particular video is about it being pitted against an American ship. Those pesky Americans always trying to win races and whatnot. So who who won? It was the most dramatic sailing race. Um, so this video is about that race in particular. I'm just going to look at the Wikipedia real quick. Is there anything else I need to know here? Blue Nose was a fishing, racing, gaff rig schooner built in 1921. Celebrated racing ship and fishing vessel. I don't know many like famous ships. I know like the Mayflower because it was important in American history, but I don't I don't know many famous boats. So this is kind of cool. The Blue Nose. Okay, nicknamed the Queen of the North Atlantic. All right, that's good. That's a good enough backstory for me. Uh, so this is a Heritage Minute all about a famous Nova Scotian boat. What a backstory. Okay, let's take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, I will endeavor to describe the, the coast of Massachusetts. The American ship is just trailing the blue nose. Oh. Oh, wow. This is an older uh, Heritage Minute as well. The Heritage Minutes can be like uh, have a big variance in when they were made. Some, are, some of these Heritage Minutes are like really modern like from 2020 and or closer. This is an older one, which is cool. Okay. So they're racing the American ship and currently winning. Okay. The American ship is just trailing the blue nose. Angus should never have agreed to this last race. She's too old. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. They, they really managed to throw in the drama here. So this is the last race of the blue nose. It's in Massachusetts, and it's against an American ship, and the Blue Nose is just barely holding it together, creaking its way. This is fascinating. These are some big ships. I didn't know they even raced stuff like this. Coming in there! Don't so hell you back! Can't do it, Matt! Oh, God. There's some kind of difficulty. No, fix it! Fix it! I want that. Oh my God, this is like dramatic. Uh, I wonder if this, it really happened like this or if this is a dramatic recreation. Either way, whatever. Right, Hoist to the sails. Day. And you can rest. Blue, no Blue Nose, yeah. <laughs> it's like, who won? I didn't, I, it wasn't clear to me who won. I think they said Blue Nose. Of course, I didn't know whether to cheer or cry because Blue Nose did defeat the American ship in its final race. But this is Canadian history we're talking about here. Maybe this is why I don't know about Blue Nose. Maybe they don't teach this in American history class. We're still a little bit bitter 
over losing to Blue Nose in Massachusetts. Now, I didn't even know about that, but <laughs> it's funny that we don't even learn about this. Their last race and still undefeated. The Blue Nose out of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia was fastest in the world for almost 20 years. Wow. I mean, fastest ship in the world. Like, that's... Even if you're not into ships and sailing, like, that's incredible. Um, yeah, I wonder what kind of technology made it, like, the best. Um, and it's Canadian, and it was undefeated uh, in its entire career. That's pretty amazing as well. Yeah, if I were on that ship, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd just be yelling stuff, yelling things, batting down the hatches. People would be, the Canadians would be like, we don't have hatches on this. Get out of here. You shouldn't even be on this ship. You're American. Go over on that one. <laughs> anyway, that's a good story, actually. Uh, really unique among the Heritage Minutes. It's about a boat. Okay, let's keep going. Next, we have a Heritage Minute called Vancouver Asa Asahi? Asai? Asahi. I'm not going to be pronouncing this correctly. I can already tell. So I'm going to go with Vancouver Asahi. And maybe in the video they'll uh, correct me on that. But what is this? Uh, it's from 1914 to 1941. The Vancouver Asahi were one of the city's most dominant amateur baseball teams. It's funny. There's a couple of uh, Heritage Minutes on baseball, I think, which is not something I think about when I think of Canada or, or historical Canadian sports moments, to be honest. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of shattering my expectations here, but they're a dominant amateur baseball team. So they were worthy of a Canadian Heritage Minute, really, winning multiple league titles in Vancouver and along the Northwest Coast. Uh, okay. Vancouver Asahi? Interesting. Is that the name of the team? Let me, let me look at more details here. Here we go. Here's some more details. The Asahi, Asahi was a Japanese Canadian baseball club. Oh, Japanese Canadian. How fascinating. One of the city's most dominant amateur teams. I think baseball to this day is extremely, extremely popular in Japan. So this kind of makes sense. I just didn't know there was, like, a Japanese-Canadian famous baseball club. Okay. They use skill and tactics to win multiple league titles in Vancouver and the Northwest Coast. In 1942, the team was disbanded when its members were among the 22,000 Japanese-Canadians who were interned by the federal government. So this is... They were interned, like... This is during a world war. I think this happened in America as well. Internment camps for Japanese citizens even, even though they were living in America. Wow, oh God. Um, they were inducted into the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in 2003 and British Columbia Sports Hall of Fame in 2005. Now that's a backstory. I'm curious what this uh, Heritage Minute is gonna highlight exactly because that it's quite a sort of a broad story here. They're just, they're just awesome. They're just great at baseball. That's the story. We were born in Canada. Okay. We spoke English. On the streets, we weren't welcome. Oh. But on the field, we were the assassin. Wow, okay. I did not know it was going to go this direction. It's talking about some of the the prejudice and racism that was kind of being felt during this time period. I think because of war towards Japanese people, even though they were, like, citizens. Like, uh, yeah, very real. Okay, okay. This is taking a, uh, an angle I didn't know it would take. Very good. Vancouver's champions. <laughs> Everyone cheer for us. Our people have a voice. Oh, so Vancouver loved them even if they were facing a little discrimination at the time, as long as they were on the baseball field, people were like, yeah, you're awesome. Keep winning. <laughs> In Canada, they created a war on Japan. Yeah. They took us from our homes. Wow. Called us enemies. Forced us into camps. Wow. I haven't learned much about this part of, of the World War as well, that this was a very real situation. 
where literally even they are of Japanese heritage, um, but they're literally American citizens, or in this case, Canadian citizens who have been living there, living amongst the people as like Canadians and were still dragged out of the, their home and put in these camps because of the circumstances of the war. Very sad to see. But it's nice, to, again, that this kind of highlights that, that period in time. But we brought the game with us. Ah. Okay. Play a little Base baseball while you're being forced to survive in an internment camp. Very bittersweet, isn't it? But it's, you know, I hope they did bring their bat and their their equipment and stuff and make the best of that situation. It, it's just a bad situation all around. Go help get us through the internment. The Vancouver Asahi were among the 22,000 Japanese Canadians interned during the Second World War. Hold up, is this guy an actual, he looks old enough that is, what, did he actually experience it? Was he actually on the team? That is awesome. They actually found him and put him in the video. Among the 22,000. Oh yeah, caught. Oh, I'm, I can't say his name correctly. Uh, Ka Kaye? <laughs> Kaye? Kamanishi? Thousand Japanese Canadians interned during the Second World War. Wow. The team never played another game. They never played another, we were... they never got to play another game after being taken away to the camp. What a shame. Wow. I really, like, love that Canada, um, goes out of its way to make a lot of these heritage minutes about sort of like uncomfortable, not necessarily things that paint Canada in a good light. Canada is not afraid to highlight these parts of Canadian history, whether some, some bad, some amazing. Uh, I, I really respect that. Uh, like that, that's amazing. Uh, I, I enjoyed that one. Uh, I didn't know about all that. All right. And finally here, let's take a look at one called John McRae. So this is about a person, John McRae, author, artist, physician, dang, during World War I. Um, John McRae pens in Flanders Fields. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, a poem that is still recited across Canada on November 11th. Uh... He, John McRae pens in Flanders Fields, a poem. That's the name of the poem, in Flanders Fields. This is a poem? Is this a famous Canadian poem? By uh, author, artist, physician, John McRae. Okay, I think I get it. Let me jump to his Wikipedia real quick. Here we go. Um, and is there anything else? Poet, physician, author, artist, soldier, jeez. Um, known for writing the famous war memorial poem in Flanders Fields. Oh, this is a famous poem. Died of pneumonia near the end of the war. Dang. Um, okay. I've never heard of this poem. Are they going to talk about, read the poem or talk about it being created? Maybe. I think that's what he's most famous for. Let's take a look. Flanders, right, Belgium. Bless you. Major John McRae, surgeon, born and raised in Guelph, Ontario. Poppies. No. Blow. So he's, he's in uh, Belgium, right? Yes, Flanders, Belgium. 1915, kind of sitting around, like needing something to do, and he writes a war poem that he did not know was going to become famous, and that one day some random American was going to watch him do that on YouTube. How he would, his mind would have been blown. In the crosses, row on the road. If you break faith. We shall not see. Mr. McRae? Wow. It'd be kind of nice to have that sort of outlet, I suppose. I got to admit, like, if I were in the war-torn battlefields of World War I um, wallowing like this, I don't know if the first thing I would do was would have the presence of mind to write some poetry. Thank God for John McRae, though. In Flanders, 
feels. Wow. What is it? I'm not sure. John McCrae of Monday. If this, if this were an American soldier, this poem would never see the light of day. The, the other soldiers was, would have just like made fun of him. Been like, what are you writing poetry, John? Writing poetry again? Get out of here. You know, they <laughs> would have been probably teasing him about it. But this became a famous poem. Montreal died in the war, but his poem is still spoken aloud when men, women, and children gather to remember. Wow, that's powerful. Oh my God, that is powerful. Writing this work of art, basically. Ma basically made a work of art out of the war during that time. Um, where can I... Here we go. In Flanders Fields. Yeah, here it is. Um, a Wikipedia entry. Is a war poem in the form of a rondeau? I'm not sure what that is. A, midi a form of medieval and renaissance French poetry? Um, written by Colonel John McRae. He was inspired to write it May 3rd after pres presiding over the funeral of a friend and fellow soldier. Um, according to legend, fellow soldiers retrieved the poem after McRae. Initially, he was dissatisfied with the work. He discarded it, and they kind of pulled it out of the garbage and were like, hey, McRae, this ain't half bad. In Flanders Fields was published December 8th. Oh, man. Um, one of the most quoted poems from the war. Where is the poem? I hope it... Here we go. It does have the poem. Okay. Um, oh, they got a copy of it there that he wrote. Uh, is this correct? In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky. The larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. Dang, pretty good stuff. Was he, I guess he was a, an artist, but also wasn't he like a, a, a dang physicist uh, and doctor? Physician, um, among other things. He kind of did it all. Oh my God. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Wow, take up our quarrel, quarrel with the foe. To you from fall, failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders fields. Dang, deep. <laughs> That's very cool. I, I had no idea about a famous poem. Or honestly, I had no idea about uh, most of these stories today, to be honest. And uh, for that reason, I actually really, really enjoyed the Heritage Minutes. These Heritage Minutes are always so fascinating. Such wonderful little stories that it is so cool Canada does this. Kind of encapsulates them in these easy to digest sort of way, one minute videos that even I have the patience to sit down and understand and appreciate. So, uh... This is actually great today. I, I enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on any of these heritage minutes today. That'd be great. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.